the best things we can do with young children is to have interesting and enjoyable conversations with them. Morning, Charlie. Are you all right? Yeah. Some settings, like the hall, a private, voluntary, independent setting in Rotherham, have been sensitised to improving communication through a programme called Every Child a Talker, ECAT. Get up in the morning and when I go to nurse, you forget to open the curtains. Developing speech and language has made me really think about the hotspots in nursery where talk happens. Others, like Evesham Nursery School in Worcestershire, are homing in on communication skills through experiences like Forest School. It's about listening to each other, sharing their thoughts and ideas, which in turn then helps with their speaking um, and just their general communication with others in their social skills. And at Clifton Children's Centre in Hull, where many of the children come into the setting speaking Polish, developing communication is central to all of their achievements. Every decision we make is about getting the very best possible deal for the children that come to Clifton. So becoming part of the ECAP project tied in with that philosophy because communication is very much at the heart of working with very young children. Oh, that is beautiful, Charita. We were asked to take part in the ECAP project, um, went to a, a meeting um, with the local authority, took two practitioners with me who came back and were very excited and wanted to take it forward. Part of the ECAP programme encourages child-led activities so that practitioners can respond to early language. We do a lot of sort of work with the babies for communication with anything from uh, eye contact. Yeah. As long as they are giving you something back. Thank you, good boy. It's a small one, thank you. We just reinforce with the babies, if they pass us something, then we don't ever sort of stop what they're saying, but we just sort of reinforce back, you know, like if he says tar, then we say thank you or please or things like that, just to encourage their language a little bit more. That's shining. We've looked at ways of how the babies can communicate and we found that sitting them opposite one another, they actually communicate through that with the eye contact and then they start babbling and then you find that the other one babbles back, so there is the communication there. We've learned through the years that babies just love vision of themselves, just looking at themselves, so we try to incorporate as much into the room as we can. <laughs> in every area, we try to put a mirror in just so it can sort of reflect their facial expressions. It helps with their communication because when they see themselves, they tend to babble to each other and, and to themselves. We've created what we call um, communication friendly spaces in each room. What's making? I don't know, should we see? Where the children can just go, chill, relax, and enjoy a nice friendly space, and, and it's, it's their space. But communication friendly spaces aren't just for children. At Clifton, parents, many of them Polish, are encouraged to come into the children's centre to be part of their children's language development. And when she's playing, does she use some English words? We do have a, a very sort of a varied intake here at Clifton, and the children do come from many different um, backgrounds, different heritage languages are spoken. Here, uh, I think we just always concentrate on the individual child. Talking about how she is feeling, because the first two months she was feeling very well. We think about the family and that child, and that's what is the starting point for everything that we do. So we observe the child and then we look at what support and what is needed to move that child on to the next step. I wanted to start a session at the centre and I wanted to do something with a little difference. So what I did was I got in touch with Anna, who was Polish, and I'm English, and we wanted to do something to bring the language and the communities together. Point to the ceiling. We've got a very well-established group. We've got Malaysian families also joining us. It has brought on my language in Polish. I can now communicate. I'm invited round to houses um, and I feel I've got a very good liaison and a relationship with the Polish community. Wow, now would Anna like to sing a song that's in Polish? 
I work in this nursery about two years. I am teaching assistant. And my main role in the nurse is to support Polish children and their parents. I am interpreter for Polish family and for the staff. I think it makes a very big difference to me having some sort of um, being able to talk some sort of Polish because I can also take it through into the centre and introduce it to the other workers who maybe don't have the opportunity to be in close contact with the Polish people like I do. <laughs> There are so many things that we want the children to learn during their year with us, but at the heart of it all is their language development. Be very careful. I will be, thank you, Josh. Because children seem to come in with more and more limited language. Did you see how when I blew, the more flames came? Josh, would you like... The environment is very, very important. Particularly the environment at Forest School, I think, provides the most wonderful, rich language um, possibilities. Once we had the story, I thought it might be quite fun to have a little listen and see what kind of things we can hear in our forest, OK? Apart from listening to the sounds in the natural world, they are gaining knowledge and understanding of the world. The airplane! An airplane, yeah, that's right. right. It's also about listening to each other, sharing their thoughts and ideas, which in turn then helps with their speaking um, and just their general communication with others. 14, 15. Games in the forest like 1, 2, 3, Where Are You? encourage careful listening, a skill that transfers back into the setting. One, two, three, where are you? Where did you think it came from up there? Yeah. Should we shout and see if you're right? One, One two, two, three, where are you? Where are you? Where are they up there? Uh, yeah. If they're excited and focused, then they'll always be learning something and their communication will always be coming on in leaps and bounds, really. What we do tend to find is children that are very quiet in nursery, especially boys, will really find their voice outside because it's a completely different environment. What's that? Are they in the sticks? What kind of sticks do you think they are? Wooden! Wooden sticks. Do you know what they are? No, the trees! The trees. <laughs> but what part of the tree might they be then? Wooden! The wooden bits? Why do you think they're underground? Because <laughs> they're in the big hole! Right, so these bits of woody twigs that you said they were, tree roots. Tree roots? A what? Look, look, as the water fills up, right to the tip of the top, it was splashes all! Will it? Yeah, like yeah, over the top, oh. there would be a flood! It'll be a flood! It would get wet, <gasps> so, so it wouldn't leave them in the forest. Look. The forest environment challenges children to express complex ideas. What is it? It's, I think, a woodpecker. What? A woodpecker. I can't see the woodpecker. Oh, it's the like hole. I don't know what's... And it's a beak. Where? A beak. Where? Oh! <laughs> there we go. And practitioners need to support children's advancing language in situations like this at just the right level. The thing that practitioners often find the most difficult is making sure that they're working at the level that that child's language is at. And what about the monitoring? How's that going? Monitoring the children and the observations? Oh, really well. well, yes. Um, I really feel now that the staff are really secure in their yeah. sort of knowledge mm -hmm. of, of um, children's communication levels and yes. skills, I think. And yeah. um, when we're observing now, um, they're keeping that in mind. 
um, when we're sharing those observations together as a staff during analysis times, people are more confident with um, coming up with examples of, yes. uh, of different mm. types of communicators <clears throat> yeah. or, or having the examples. The practitioners have to make sure that their interactions are at that level for the child at their language stage rather than their chronological age. And that therefore means that within the setting they have to look at not necessarily children in ages, but looking at children at language stages. So has anything come from the data that's made you make any real um, strategic decisions as to what you want to do within the setting? It's enabled us to really specifically look at those children with English as an additional language. We've been able to put support in place with staff, um, support staff who've got those specific skills, both in working with children with English and additional language, but staff who've got enhanced skills with speech and language yeah. development and working with children on the specific needs for those groups. So this is what has really helped us to identify yes. mm. who those groups are. Therefore, it's the skill of the practitioner to be able to alter their language levels. And within the setting, they need to be able to almost challenge each other as to whether they are using the right strategies and the right language levels for those children at those different language stages. Teddy's nose. No, no. Nose. Well, well done. Good listening. Well done. Practitioners' understanding of speech and language development has increased greatly, and it's allowed them to realise that language learning is everybody's responsibility. Come on the stage and start banging your feet on the stage like a big giant. See how loud you can make it. They're able to support those children who don't really have a language learning difficulty, but they do need experiences. Very good dancing girl. But I think they're also recognising those children who may have more of a specific difficulty, and therefore they're able to refer those children on through to speech and language therapy. Does mummy use parsley and daddy? Mummy and daddy make parsley, but I don't eat my parsley. You don't? Why? Because I don't like parsley. Ah, it's my favourite. Because we've been part of ECAP for about 18 months now, um, the practitioners actually stop and think about how they speak to the children. One of the ways children's language is supported is by recasting and repeating back language. Dad, Dad, can I have a go on your pirate ship? Yes. Where are we yes. going? Uh, to Ireland. To Ireland? Where are we going to go after Ireland? Um, to the North Pole. To the North Pole. We identify that a lot of it used to be more direct to the children, more, more do this, do that, and now we, we ask them what they think, what they want to do, and give them open-ended questions. Where do they go? They go to bank treasure. <gasps> and then I've got the Yeah! yeah. 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 away on your pirate ship and yeah. find some treasure. Look at individual children. Think about your staff. Make sure that they're equipped with the right skills so that they're aware of early communication, that they're aware of what good quality interactions are. Yeah. I think they're the key things. If you start with the individual and the rest sort of comes out. Yeah.